So we're gonna load up on fuel, uh, get topped off on the auxiliary tank and the primary tank, and then we're gonna hit the cat scales. Stick around. So Ellen and I are staying at the Elkhart Campground in Elkhart, Indiana, and I've got a couple of customer jobs to do, but because the weather has been a bit iffy for the past couple of days, I'm actually going to uh, wait around for the weather to clear, and in the meantime, I'm going to continue on with this, um, answering some questions that came out of the last video I did about tire inflation pressure. And although this video isn't a follow-up specifically to tire inflation pressure, it is about weighing the truck and the RV because a lot of people had questions about that. So I figured I'd do this video and show how that's all done. Now, earlier in the week, what I did is I had the truck hooked up to the RV, went to a lava, and I topped off the fluids in the truck, filled up the fuel tank, filled up the depth, and then I weighed them together and got a total weight and could see what was on the steer, drive, and trailer axles. Now what I'm going to do is go back to the CAT scale, just with the truck, I'm going to top off the fluids before I get onto the scale, and then I'm going to get the weight. And then what that's gonna allow me to do is take the two weights, uh, weigh slips, and compare them and calculate exactly how much the RV weighs by itself, and then how much the pin weight is and how the pin weight is distributed between the drive axle and the steer axle of the truck. And then I can compare that to what the specifications are of the truck and make sure that I'm within specifications so that I'm operating safely. All right, so here we go. Customer 67, your shower is ready. Please proceed to shower two. Hopefully I don't leave the camera here. I always use gloves because I hate getting diesel fuel on my hands. All right. Have my EFS card, fuel discount card. I didn't even see what the fuel Customer price is here. 67. So it's 388, I think. Please proceed to shower two. We'll see what I get for a discount today. Won't know until it actually post into the app. Diesel. I'll get some depth too. All right, I'll start loading the primary tank first, kind of on a medium speed uh, while I prep the auxiliary. I've only got about half a tank of um, empty on the primary tank. It's taken about 15 gallons there. This should take about 38. This is a high speed. Already at 21 gallons. Busy in here today. The cat scale over there somehow so I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get it on the out or have to wrap around and come back through all right so this is full I don't know if it topped off completely close enough took a total of 50 gallons between this tank and the primary tank jump down here And now I will authorize for death. So $200 that came to. Should only have to take like a gallon of death at this point, I guess. Ever notice these, the death hose is really tight to pull out? At least at these loves it is. I always find that it's like a, you gotta hold it otherwise it will reach out. Loud in here today. All right, about a gallon and a quarter. I 
to go button this all up again. All right, good to go. Don't forget the camera. All right, let's go figure out where this cat scale is. All right, I see the cat scale over there, so I actually have to go out and come back in to hit it. So let's see where my way out is here. After a quarter of a mile, turn left onto State Route 49. Actually, I can definitely feel that I've got more weight now with the tanks full. All right, here we go. It's as easy as this. Just drive up, get your steer axle up on the front here. And I'll get out and show you this and also bring up my app. Let's see if I can get the app out. Ah, there's a cat scale. Away my truck app. And up on there, is the location number, which is 3149. So I will put in 3149. I'm gonna confirm it. And this will go through, I'm, okay, let's go. I'll go through next. I'll accept, oh, it's 1475. Used to be 14 bucks. When I first started, it was like 13. Okay, it's very fine that. Oh, I hope I'm lined up properly. Okay, so there we go. So we've got um, 50, 540, 8460, 16280, and 3280. All right, let me show you how I'm lined up on the scale, seeing as a lot of people don't um, know about this. I know a lot of you do, but a lot don't too. So here we go. Let me show you. All right, so you can see there's three sections of the scale. Here's the first section where you put your steer axle. Here's the second section right here to there. So the drive goes here. And then of course back here is where you have the RV axles. All right, so three positions and we have the weights. Now, next I'll go, um, be a couple of days, I'll go and top off the fuel again, weigh the truck, and then I'll show you on the screen how to calculate a bunch of stuff. There you go, gonna roll out of here. Now I'm going back to the CAT scale with just the truck and I'm going to top off the fluids again because I use some between now and then and then I'm going to put the truck on the cat scale and get its weight alone. All right so it's not crowded in the fuel lanes so I am going to go through with just my truck. You certainly don't want to come through here if you're going to hold up the truckers. So let me go get this topped off and then we'll head over to the scale which is right over there. All right, we are topped off. There's a truck up on the scale right now, so we'll have to wait a minute. And then we'll get it rock and rolling. Gotta go, uh oh. I'm driving like I've got the RV on me. Man, it seems like it's taken a long time for him to get weighed. There it goes. All right, pull your tires up to the first portion of the scale. I'll show you what this looks like again, just in case you didn't catch it the first time. All right, so drive is on this section of the scale and the steer is on the forward section. In front of that yellow line, this one is between that yellow line and that yellow line. All right, and up there is the location number, which is 3126. Last time I weighed, I was in the truck, so I will do it again. This will look for the location, confirm it via GPS, I suppose. And of course, taking forever. At least there's nobody behind me, okay. So it tells me that I'm in Elkhart, Indiana, so now it just wants me to confirm. 3126. I'll confirm it, and then it should go. That's me next, 1475. 
Um, okay, so there we go. 5,500 on the steer in 9980 on the, uh, uh, oh no, uh, drive axle is 4480. So the total gross is 9980. All right, so uh, let's go get that up on the spreadsheet and we'll do a little bit of geeky math. All right, here we go into the geeky math. Let's start with the way slips. Here we are with the combined way slip, RV and truck together. We have 5540 on the steer, 8460 on the drive, 16280 on the trailer axle for a total weight of 30,280. On the truck itself, we have 5500 on the steer, 4480 on the drive, nothing on the trailer axles obviously, and then the total weight of the truck by itself is 9980. Basically what I did is I took those numbers and I put them on this spreadsheet and then we did some calculations. I'll come back to that in a minute. The other thing that we have on this sheet is the specs of the truck in terms of its uh, axle ratings and its gross vehicle weighting and stuff like that. You get some of that information from the door jam on the truck, but I actually used the manufacturer's spec sheet, which is right somewhere around here, uh, right here. So this is the sheet for the 2022 model year, which my truck is. It's a Ram 3500 4x4 with crew cab and an eight foot box. It has a 6.7 high output turbo. It has a six speed transmission, 410 axle ratio. And then here are all the numbers from that, which I just took and put onto the spreadsheet. Also on the spreadsheet, I have the RV's gross vehicle weight rating, which I get from the placard on the side of the RV. So let's take a look. Um, here is this truck's ratings again on the steer axle, 6,000. So whether the RV is on or off, I am within spec there. The drive axle is 9,750. Again, within spec there. Uh, the gross vehicle weight rating of the truck is 14,000. And with the RV on, we are right at it. And that is with the truck loaded with all my tools, which is really contributing to that number. Um, it's filled with fuel in the primary tank and the auxiliary tank and filled with depth. And I am in the truck when I weighed. So we are a little bit over that. And I know why it's because I have a little bit more tools in there and supplies than I usually would. I typically would put those in the chase vehicle, but I didn't. Uh, so I'll have to do that next time. And the good news is, is that every 10 miles I go, I lose a burn a gallon of fuel so the weight goes by, down by seven pounds roughly right wishful thinking um, so that's uh, where I'm overweight there and then uh, the gross combined vehicle weight rating uh, gross combined weight rating is 43,000 I'm well under that with the RV on by 13,000 pounds roughly on the trailer axle, rated for 16,000, we are over 280 pounds there. Again, that's probably, I got a couple things in the RV that should really be put in the chase vehicle. Plus we have a lot of bottled water in there, as well as um, groceries and stuff like that. The black tanks have about 10 gallons of water in each of them. That's how we travel. Uh, the fresh water tank is empty and the gray water tanks are empty. So I've got to get that down a little bit. Shouldn't be too much of a problem. So let's see. Yeah, so it says on the side of the RV that the most the RV should ever weigh is 19,084 pounds. But if we calculate how, how much the RV actually weighs, by taking the total weight of the RV and truck and subtracting the weight of the truck, then we come up with 20,300 pounds. So that's how much the RV weighs by itself. Well, turns out that we are overweight on the RV by 1,216 pounds or 6.4%. So again, uh, shedding 1,216 pounds out of the RV is gonna be really, really tough. Um, most people say you can, they go over by 10% is acceptable. I don't know what is or isn't acceptable. We're 6.4, so if I go by that rule, I guess we're fine. But nonetheless, we're over on the gross vehicle weight rating if you trust that that's accurate, which I don't know if you can trust it or not, but it's, it is what it is. So the pin weight, um, it's interesting that the rule of thumb in the de facto standard is people say, the pin weight is usually 20% of what the gross vehicle weight rating is. Uh, and that would be accurate if the 
the, if the trailer or the RV actually weighed 19,084 pounds, then we could say, well, the pin weight should be 3,817, which is 20 percent. Turns out, if we do the math, as we know, here's the weight of the RV by itself, and we know what the pin weight is actually because we look up here and we can see when we put the RV on, the steer axle picks up 40 pounds and the drive axle picks up 3,980 for a total of 4,020 pounds of weight from the RV is transferred to the truck. So that's the pin weight, which just so happens to be about 19.8%, um, which is close enough to 20 for me. So there you go. Now the next number you see on here is the tire at 4,070. And basically what that is, is we have two axles, so a total of four tires. I took the 16,280 pounds, divided by four, and that comes up with 4,070. And that is the number I use to go look at the load inflation table for my specific tires and look it up to figure out what the cold inflation pressure should be. And that turns out on my tire, it's between 100 PSI and 105 PSI. So that's cold inflation pressure that I use, and that's how I calculated it. All right, so I think um, that's pretty clear. This is all you know, basic math, uh, but if you have any questions or comments, feel free to put them down below. If I misstated something, I'll point it out below, and I'll be sure to correct it in the comments. Again, um, as usual, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you like this kind of content, please subscribe. And if you think anybody else will get value from this video, please share it out to them. Thanks for watching. Hope to see you next time. Take care.